What's up guys? I am out here in Colorado with my brother-in-law's dog, Anna. Kona didn't really feel like going. Sometimes she just likes to be lazy and stay at home. So I thought I'd take the more enthusiastic dog. So Anna was pretty stoked to get out here. So. We are just enjoying ourselves out here on this little nature jaunt, trying to find some goodies. And I found some watercress. They're pretty easy to identify and super tasty in salads or if you stir fry them with like pork, um, some soy sauce or something. I really enjoy them. One of my favorite vegetables and pretty easy to find and identify. So if you see a small stream, you can always keep an eye out for them and you probably find them. All right, let's continue down the trail. They're really old and pretty buggy. So look what I found in there. Some oysters alongside with a snake. Gotta watch where you're going. Two snakes doing their thing, I guess. In here, somebody put some, and there's some older ones down there. Nice uh, couple of oysters here. That's pretty buggy. Okay. This stuff here is orich. Um, I've actually never had it, but I've read a lot about it. It's a very similar edible to lamb's quarter, which if you forage at all, you might be familiar with. Um, people love it because it's one of the easier things to eat. It's not as bitter. And thank you, Anna. <laughs> but it's kind of uh, spinach-like. So let's take a look here. See how it has that sort of frosty underside? Lamb's Quarter has that as well. So we're just gonna pick a few. There's a whole lot here. Look at that huge cluster. Forgot my knife. Isn't that the story of my life? You never have it. I've got my fire starter, which has this piece here. Oh. Well, it's kind of butchering these. <laughs> See their gills? And they grow off of dead stumps. So they like dead trees. Um, they like different trees depending on where you are living. And sometimes they're a little more brown and sometimes they're a little more white. It just depends. There's different, um, different uh, species, subspecies of Lorotus austriatus. But they're always buggy. See the beetles in there? Um, I recently found out that the beetles are actually going after the fly larva. That's lots of fly li flies lay their eggs in here and then that's what the beetles are kind of after, I guess. But yeah, delicious, edible, keep your eyes peeled. This is actually um, my second mushroom species I'd ever found. They're pretty easy to identify, so it's a good beginner mushroom. All right, anybody know what this is? So this guy is why it is important to really know uh, what you're looking for in any poisonous um, lookalikes in the family. So this I know kind of looks like parsley, but it is not, it is poison hemlock. Um, if you look at the stem there, you see those red dots. Uh, yeah, that is a identifying factor in poison hemlock. They have white flowers. 
this is kind of one of those things that you just really need to know what you're doing before you start picking in the parsley family because it's easy to confuse. I mean, look at those leaves. Looks like carrot or something along those lines, you know? Here is another look at it. You see the red stem? They don't always have that. They're also smooth because you can find Queen Anne's lace and the legs will be slightly hairy. You can always remember Queen Anne has hairy legs. The flowers are different too, but when it doesn't flower, it makes it a little bit harder to tell. So kind of something to stay away from unless you are pretty good at identifying plants. It's a little thin. I like thin asparagus. But that is definitely... So that was really cool. Um, I was just walking and a guy was asking what I was looking for. He thought I was looking for asparagus, which is another thing on my list. Um, and he showed me a small area and we found a couple. So I only have four, but hey, four is better than zero. And that's exciting because these are my first asparagus or wild asparagus, feral asparagus, I should say. Just a nice day out foraging. There's always something good to find outside. It's just a matter of getting a little familiar with some common plants. So I'm excited we found something that'll give us a good dinner. Yeah, this is uh, my favorite part. Not cleaning it always sucks. That's why they always tell you, or most mushroomers say to do your best cleaning the mushrooms in the field and then you don't really have as much work when you come home. But I didn't have a knife. I always forget my knife. And when you slice it too, you can see if the bugs got in it and like, that's really clean. There's no holes in there. You would be able to see little holes where the little worms like to go up through there.
taste this. It's not the prettiest, the egg kind of mushed in there, but this is kind of a take on a Korean New Year's soup, but you usually put um, little rice cake, like oval rice cake, instead of the noodles. I just had this stuff, so this is why I made this. Check out this mandu. So hot. Delicious. And most of it came from the wild. Thanks for the free meal, Mother Nature. Ooh. Yeah. It's too hot. These pots are so hot. I put my four little asparagus. Delicious asparagus. We got the orange in here. That really tastes exactly like spinach. I think you could fool anyone with that. Oyster mushrooms, so tasty, of course. Well, thanks again, guys, for joining me on this episode. And hopefully you like the uh, little bit of foraging there. Guys, I will catch you on another one. Uh, thanks for joining, and I'll see you next time. Peace.